Hey folks, today we got a huge update for the DJI Mavic 3, a firmware update for both this as well as a DJI Fly app and the remote controls, depending on which remote control you're using. In this update, it adds yet another slate of things that probably should have been there since the very beginning, but hey, they're at least here now. So I've been testing this firmware for a little while, so I'm gonna walk through every single one of these items for you to show you how it works in the real world. Okay, so diving right into the first one, it is adding more features and functions to the tail lens. And this will actually be kind of the theme through a number of these here. Uh, and it's something that it released, a lot of the functions didn't work on the zoom lens. And that's an optically zoomed lens. That's just not the digital zoom. That's the full optical zoom kind of 7X lens there. Uh, so in this case, they've added in AEB, uh, which is auto exposure bracketing. They've added in burst shooting at time shot and other sub modes. So basically kind of some of the underneath stuff of that, like the different versions of the time mode are in that. Uh, and then also they've added the pro mode option to that, as well as the ability to shoot in raw as well, which of course is huge uh, for photography folks that want to be able to shoot uh, raw and then go ahead and play with those images after the fact. You can see this all on the screen right now going through the different modes um, on this firmware and then having the ability to shoot in raw. By the way, I've actually put a bunch of photos and videos and stuff from this video shot on the Mavic 3 in a Dropbox share somewhere down in the description there. So if you want to look at some of the actual stuff from that, you can go ahead and do that. And hey, a quick note before we go on to the next one. If you are finding this video interesting or useful, definitely whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next up, another telelens improvement. Uh, they've added a bunch of different video modes. So the total video modes now supported on the tower lens include uh, 4K 25, 4K 30, 4K 50, 1080p 25, 1080p 30, and 1080p 50. And then within that again, there's now the pro mode option to be able to configure all things like white bounds and exposure, um, all that you can do now on the tail lens that you couldn't previously do. Now, of course, this does not mean it's parity with the main lens. Uh, now keep in mind, it's more than just the lens, it's the entire processing system behind it. And we see that in the next item, which is that they added HLG support for the main lens. You can see that in the menu options right here, but that's not yet available or not available on the tail lens. And we can see the main experience expansion yet again on the next bullet point, which is they've added the 1080p 200 frame per second option for the main lens. Uh, but we don't have that, unfortunately, on the tail lens. Uh, but here's 200 frames per second of a train passing by with the birds. And of course, with the train, you can't really tell whether it's slow or not. You might just think it's slow. That's kind of all I had to work with this day. But the birds help to kind of show this a little bit. So in this case, I'm actually pulling back the drone relatively fast, uh, but you can't quite see that at 200 frames per second. And again, I'll put this sample down below in the video there uh, if you want to check that out. I wouldn't say this particular footage was necessarily the best example of the slow-mo. Uh, one, it was a bit hazy this day, and also it was a lot of pollen in the air being blown around by the wind, so it's going to be a bit fuzzier than it would be. I've got other footage uh, back that I shot last November in the slow-mo modes uh, that was way crispier on kind of a more overcast day that just looked a little bit better. One thing to note here, though, is there's a pretty substantial crop on this. Uh, so just to kind of iterate through this, starting with normal and then switching into the slow-mo menu, and then from there going to 200 frames per second. You can see it does crop in quite a bit. Uh, that's just, I think it is kind of what it is. Next up, if you have the Mavic 3 Cine, you've got two new modes of ProRes coming in here. Uh, they've added ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 LT. Previously, you only had ProRes 422 HQ. The main difference is there is the megabit rating that is shot on each one of those. Uh, so just using Apple's reference site here for 1080p video, they haven't updated it in five years or whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, this is mostly about saving space while still being able to shoot Apple ProRes. Next, if you've got the Mavic 3 Cine, there's a new option there as well for you to add one second hyperlapse mode. Uh, it's not being offered on the base model for some reason, but it's there if you got the city model. The next one is more of a minor performance thing, which the DJI says they've optimized the D-Log color assistance mode to be more vivid color performance. I don't have like a good way of like shooting that and showing that side by side on one drone, but uh, here's the option for you. They've also added a new LUT that you can download uh, that has more vivid color as well. That's available on the DJI website though. It's not something in like the apps and things like that. So you gotta go to the website, download that, and you've got that LUT. Next, back to more firmware updated stuff. They've added a 3X digital zoom for the normal video mode. Now keep in mind, anytime you're just digitally zooming on that main lens, it's simply just cropping in. That's all it's doing. Uh, but this makes it easier. And with that, you know, a 5.1K uh, camera. So just makes it really easy to tap on that and get that zoom. Of course, it is a crop, but sometimes you just want the ability to do that on the camera versus doing it afterwards in post-production. Next, for both quick shots as well as master shots, they've added D-Log and HLG mode. This is huge for master shots. Also on the quick shots, it excludes Asteroid for some odd reason. So Asteroid didn't get this, but this is huge for a master shots because I've long talked about how master shots is like your B-roll's best friend. Uh, you just send it on a, its little journey and it comes back with three minutes of perfectly usable B-roll footage. You don't even have to use the master shots option with 
within the app in terms of like the post-production little 20 second video with music thing, ignore all that. Just take that beautiful 4K footage and go ahead and use that in whatever production you need to. Now you have the ability to do that in D-Log mode as well as HLG mode. In the past, you just had only the normal colors. Next, if you bought the $160 wide angle lens attachment for the front of the Mavic 3, uh, that's now supported on all the intelligent modes, including hyperlapse, master shots, a focus track, and quick shots. I can't actually buy that in Europe for some reason. I asked DJI why, and they don't have a, a really good answer there. It's only available in the US and the other countries, but it's not available for purchase in Europe. I, I have no idea why. Now, the next one is up my creek here, which is they've added the quote, a nifty option uh, to Active Track. Uh, now, what's a nifty option? Don't worry, I've got you covered in an entirely separate video up there while I take this thing out uh, and dive through all the nuances of how this works side by side between normal Active Track version and nifty version. Uh, and if I was to consolidate that down into to one like word, uh, I would say it's nifty. Uh, honestly, you gotta watch that video. It's, it's really kind of complex to explain what it does, uh, but I think I cover it pretty well in that video there. However, the one thing you'll notice is not on this whole list is support for the new DJI RC. Uh, DJI did previously confirm, promise, whatever you wanna call it, that the Mavic 3 is going to get support for this, uh, but they're saying that it didn't quite make the cut for this particular firmware. Uh, based on what I'm hearing there, I think you're talking really, really close to not making that cut. Uh, so I would not like overthink that as being that they're not gonna do that. Uh, that DJI did confirm is still absolutely their intent. It's just not here for today's firmware update. Uh, but I'm sure when it does drop, I will be able to do an entire video on it at some point down the road and, and talk about where it works well and doesn't work and all that goodness. Anyways, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and like that like button bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one. Mm.